In finance, the weighted average life of an amortizing loan or amortizing bond, also called average life, is the weighted average of the times of the principal repayments, it's the average time until a dollar of principal is repaid. In a formula, where is the principal, is the principal repayment that is included in payment, hence, is the fraction of the total principal that is included in payment, and, is the time from the calculation date to payment. If desired, can be expanded as for a monthly bond, where is the fraction of a month between settlement date and first cash flow date. Wall of classes of loans, in loans that allow prepayment, the wall cannot be computed from the amortization schedule alone. One must also make assumptions about the prepayment and default behavior, and the quoted wall will be an estimate. The wall is usually computed from a single cash flow sequence. Occasionally, a simulated average life may be computed from multiple cash flow scenarios, such as those from an option adjusted spread model. Related concepts Wall should not be confused with the following distinct concepts bond duration. Bond duration is the weighted average time to receive the discounted present values of all the cash flows, while wall is the weighted average time to receive simply the principal payments. For an amortizing loan with equal payments, the wall will be higher than the duration, as the early payments are weighted towards interest, while the later payments are weighted towards principal, and further, taking present value discounts the later payments. Time until 50% of the principal has been repaid. Wall is a mean, while 50% of the principal repaid is a median. See difference between mean and median. This is a common misunderstanding. Since principal outstanding is a concave function for a flat payment amortizing loan, less than half the principal will have been paid off at the wall. Intuitively, this is because most of the principal repayment happens at the end. Formally, the distribution of repayments has negative skew. The small principal repayments at the beginning drag down the wall more than they reduce the median. Weighted average maturity, WAM is an average of the maturity dates of multiple loans, not an average of principal repayments. Applications, wall is a measure that can be useful in credit risk analysis on fixed income securities, bearing in mind that the main credit risk of a loan is the risk of loss of principal. All else equal. A bond with principal outstanding longer has greater credit risk than a bond with shorter wall. In particular, wall is often used as the basis for yield comparisons in I-spread calculations. Wall should not be used to estimate a bond's price sensitivity to interest rate fluctuations, as wall includes only the principal cash flows, omitting the interest payments. Instead, one should use bond duration, which incorporates all the cash flows. Examples, the wall of a bullet loan is exactly the tenor, as the principal is repaid precisely at maturity. On a 30-year amortizing loan, paying equal amounts monthly, one has the following walls, for the given annual interest rates, note that as the interest rate increases, wall increases, since the principal payments become increasingly backloaded. Wall is independent of the principal balance, though payments and total interest are proportional to principal. For a coupon of 0%, where the principal amortizes linearly, the wall is exactly half the tenor plus half a payment period, because principal is repaid in arrears. So for a 30-year 0% loan, paying monthly, the wall is years. Total interest, wall allows one to easily compute the total interest payments, given by where R is the annual interest rate and P is the initial principal. This can be understood intuitively as, the average dollar of principal is outstanding for the wall, hence the interest on the average dollar is, and now one multiplies by the principal to get total interest payments. Equals proof equals, more rigorously, one can derive the result as follows. To ease exposition, assume that payments are monthly, so periodic interest rate is annual interest rate divided by 12, and time. Then. Total interest is. Where is the principal outstanding at the beginning of period I? The statement reduces to showing that. Both of these quantities are the time weighted total principal of the bond, and they are simply different ways of slicing it. The sum counts how long each dollar of principal is outstanding, while the counts how much principal is outstanding at each point in time. Working backwards, and so forth, 
the principal outstanding when k periods remain is exactly the sum of the next k principal payments. The principal paid off by the last principal payment is outstanding for all n periods, while the principal paid off by the second do lasth principal payment is outstanding for n a1 periods, and so forth. Using this, the sums can be rearranged to be equal. For instance, if the principal amortized is $100, $80, $50, then the sum would on the one hand be, and on the other hand would be. This is demonstrated in the following table, which shows the amortization schedule, broken up into principal repayments, where each column is a, and each row is. Equals computing wall from amortized payment equals, the above can be reversed, given the terms and amortized payment A. One can compute the wall without knowing the amortization schedule. The total payments are and the total interest payments are, so the wall is. Similarly, the total interest as percentage of principal is given by. Notes and references. For Bozzi, Frank J., The Handbook of Fixed Income Securities, ISBN 0-87094-985-3. See also, Amortization Calculator, Amortization Schedule, Amortizing Loan